professional photographer? What would I you call now, yourself? Now I can call myself a commercial photographer because I feel like I've done more. But back then, I started out not even being a creative. I was just working in an office, cubicle, nine to five, and it was only because I became a single mom and I was thinking, well, I need extra income. And the only way to make extra income after nine to five is on a weekend. So I started, uh, I thought, okay, well, wedding photography, I can do it on weekend. Uh, yeah. And with few hours a weekend, I can maybe make this much. And then it, it's from the outside looking in, it seems like it's so easy. So I did two weddings for free, a, a friend of a friend. And then I realized, no, actually, this needs a lot more work from having experience to how to charge, like all the little things, right? It's not as easy as I thought, and plus, like, how to get my name out? How do I find clients? Yeah, was this when the internet was, where it was easier to market that way? And were you doing photography before? Did you have an, have you always had an interest in it? No interest. No, you my, just decided, boom, I'm going to try wedding photography. <laughs> right. Well, my dad... That was bold. My dad was a uh, professional for a long time okay. in Hong Kong when we were little, and then he retired from that and started working. After I was born and then my siblings were born, he, he felt like, well, I need a real job. I can't be an artist. So he went and did work for a company for a long time, and he gave that up. But then on, on a hobby level, he was still shooting. But because my dad was a photographer, I'm like, well, I don't want to be a photographer because you're doing that. I'm not going to do that. Right. So I started as a graphic designer. Is and that then, what you were doing in the cubicle? Actually, right after college, I did graphic design for like a year, a design website, um, but I didn't like it because turning a hobby into work, and plus at that time I was still young, so I'm like, well, this is boring. I'm sitting in front of a com cam uh, computer all day long, so I gave that up and I was like, I'm just going to do 9 to 5 where I get a steady paycheck. I can just go home and forget about it and continue with my hobby, which is graphic design. So was it creative, your 9 to 5, or totally not, not at all? Not at all. <laughs> what was it? I <laughs> was in shipping department, you so were... <laughs> I'm really good at shipping. I know how to do all the labels. Sean's done that before, actually. <laughs> Um, so I did that, and then and then I was pregnant, and then daughter was born. Started taking pictures of her, like every single crazy mom, like obsessed with the kid. Um, Is this when blogging was happening or before? Flickr. Flickr was uh, in. Did and you start on Flickr? Then? I started on Flickr, and you know how social media is like either cats or babies. Yeah. <laughs> so I got myself a baby. <laughs> so it, w it did really well on Flickr. Like, I got a lot of followers because they loved seeing my journey with her. And on top of that, after my divorce, I used that creativity, like photography, to express my sorrow, to express my struggle. Um, every time I post a picture, there's always this long caption of my feelings. Yeah. And so people follow my journey through that. And even when I started dating, uh, and then, you know, that dynamic changed. My caption changed. It seems more happier, and I started posting this guy. <laughs> and so people, like, even follow that. Where it's fascinating to them because they get to see how I live my life, how my journey is. Yeah. Um, well, you're also letting them in. You're one of the few people that I know. I don't follow a ton of people on Instagram, but you put a lot of thought behind your posts. It's like you're engaging people on a thinking level, which personally I really enjoy because I feel, I just, well, I'm a thinker and that's just, I love it. I love to think about everything. And so anytime I can talk to someone about it or in that scenario, it's just a quick snippet, but there's always something so thoughtful there. Yeah. I think the amazing thing is for me, it's just basically an outlet. But not realizing, actually, it will come back with the respond. And, yeah. And I never knew that because to me, it's just outlet, letting it's, it out. It's like a catharsis, too. Yeah. And then slowly, I realized, oh, there's so many other people having the same struggle with me, which is amazing. And at that time, it was primarily parenting or also trying to figure out where you wanted to go creatively? Um, well, and then from Flickr, through that, I was able, because I have a set of followers already, then from that, I start announcing, hey, I'm going to do wedding 
photography and from that I started getting clients and because just from what I post they feel that they could trust me yeah. <laughs> with their once in a lifetime <laughs> Which is that she's a thinker. We can totally trust her. Yeah, they they, they love my work. But also in the beginning, it's funny because I see it as an artistic thing. Didn't think it as like, it's someone's once in a lifetime memory. So I would shoot like the back and the feet. And then like, after that one wedding, people would start criticizing like, well, it's a wedding. We want to see faces. (laughs) Um, so luckily my first two clients were very artistic too so they're like alright we love it but now I look back I realize I was doing things that was maybe too creative and not thinking that it's someone's memory mm-hmm. so I was shooting in a way where it's you know just feet and <laughs> that's their whole wedding album it's just the back and their feet in the shadow <laughs> yeah, they probably want a few photos of themselves, of yeah. their faces, their dress. But in a way, you're also forward thinking because a lot of wedding photography has become very different cropping and feed, and it's become way more artistic where people don't just want the row of people, you know, right. in the wedding party with standing there smiling. So, yeah. So, so we'll just say you're ahead of your time. <laughs> Um, so then from then on I think I was a wedding photographer for like two years and I assisted other people just to gain more experience and slowly I just feel like wedding photography isn't for me because every weekend I'm away from my daughter Um, so I was like you know I need to do something different and And were you all self-taught with this then when you decided and then whatever you learned just through your dad I'm sure yeah and then us I mean maybe just by looking at other people's work and constantly criticize my own work or is criticize maybe a too harsh of a word but constantly looking at my work and say well this one get more response this one get less or like how do I feel about this and constantly changing and the way I work Mm -hmm. um Plus, I, I'm more I'm more a self-taught person than yeah. going to school and being told what to do. Yeah, I, I like I'm to um, fail and then learn from it. Yeah, what do you, that's a you know, what does that mean for you? Like the idea, nobody, none of us say that. Most people don't want to say I like to fail. Yeah, like I feel like there's so there's still even though we sort of claim that it's okay to fail, we mm-hmm. don't really want to. Yeah. So I love that you say that. You want us. You want to legitimately see what works, and you have to try right to see if it does. I think because I see failure or tragic drama as something beautiful. Oh. Like I was <laughs> drawn on it. So failure to me, it's. Uh, um, having that struggle, it's like a beautiful thing in life. And sometimes I even purposely make myself feel tragic. <laughs> Wait, oh, so how do you do that? What do you mean? Being harsh to myself. I think yeah. like part of it's like it's so hurtful to yourself. But at the same time, by doing that and then rise from it, it became something so amazing. And then you share your experience to other people and... I, I tend to draw on that a lot. And where do you think that started, or where did that come from for you? Have you been like that just growing up? Is it cultural? I don't think so. I think ever since when I became a photographer, I became obsessed with that. You were obsessed with the trauma <laughs> Self, and the struggle. Self-destruction. <laughs> <laughs> That's really interesting. Well, and this, maybe this is jumping ahead a little, but... If not, if it is, fine. How do you translate all of that? I was just having this conversation to the world where everything seems so perfect. And you're one of the people that does really well on Instagram and people follow your work. And how how are you able to keep a sense of, of reality of the bigger picture, of the struggle like we've talked about with the work that you do? And do you feel frustrated sometimes that the bar is just getting raised so high that people don't feel like they can share sort of a normal life anymore. I mean, Mm. it just feels like it's all so beautiful. And what do you think about that? Um, 
I think to me, is I constantly do this one thing and suddenly, okay, I'm getting bored. I need to do this thing. So uh, after sharing maybe a lot of amazing <laughs> restaurant food stuff, uh-huh. I just feel like today I feel like I need to let something out. Then I would just put something out there like my feelings or you know, I'm inspired. I would put something inspiring. But um, most of the time we all go through that. I think like there's a period of like, we're doing so well, doing so well, and then you just take a deep plunge and like realizing, wait, actually it's not going that well. I'm feeling this today. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling, oh, my work suck, <laughs> which I do that a lot. And then you like go down, I'm like, okay, how do you feel? And then like express it through, for me, it's photography. So you do it either through the photography or through the words. And yeah. that is, it just feels good to you. Do you... Do you like that you get the response you get back now that you have such a big following? I do love it, but it makes me makes me sad to know that there's so many people out there having same struggles. Um, wow, it's such a normal thing, but to know that um, it brings out that compassion in you because realizing there's so many unhappy people out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To realize well the humanity of all of us. And I find, I don't know, it, it also, something about the way you do it feels very genuine. It just, it works. Sometimes I feel like people do it because they think, oh, well, we have to connect, right? That's part of being on social media. And I don't think that you can fake that. I think it just has to come out the way it does. And the way you're describing it, it's just the normal cycles of life. And rather than skip over the parts where you have to go a little deeper, or like you said, you're feeling hard on yourself. Instead, you choose to include those in your feed. Mm-hmm. And I think that creates, you know, it's a more full picture of a, per- of a person. Right, because we all have our ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah. So from the wedding... How did it go? How did it become transition into what you're doing now? Was that the transition? It went from wedding to um, more so and then, work? Yeah, and then wedding was doing Flickr and Twitter days where um, it was doing more weddings through that time. But then when Instagram and Pinterest came out, that's also at the same time where I start transitioning my career because I start seeing you know things are changing and plus I feel like wedding isn't for me um, so I'm like well what can I do and through blogging I started blogging a lot more food and restaurants and, and do you just love food right <laughs> like how did that happen that's just a natural part I of love you. food but but only because I started blogging it forced me to try new things because now I want to showcase new stuff to other to people. To photograph. To photograph. And then, plus, I became more adventurous with what I eat because I'm like, well, I already ate burger 10,000 <laughs> times, so can we, let's, let's pick this truffle, whatever. <laughs> like, something different, just to be able to talk about something new. And then, but with that, it pushed me to try new things, which was, like, amazing. For and somehow, food and photography. Right? Yeah, and then somehow with that became a not intentionally it became a marketing tool because suddenly everyone thinks let's go to Bonnie if we want to know what restaurants to yeah. go to in fact this is a good time to say that we're sitting at Proof Bakery because <laughs> one of my thought, favorites <laughs> yeah one of our yeah my favorites too because a lot of your work ends up being within restaurants and just out in the world you're very rarely in your home studio, <laughs> right? Would you say right. that's fair? You're either eating somewhere amazing or you're shooting somewhere or you're just out and about in the city a lot. And right. people, I agree. I mean, I love seeing where you go because I know you sort of get a feeling of your aesthetic after you try different places. I think I was telling uh, Young that you may be one of the people I know about Proof. I know about Proof because I followed you (laughs) and then you know word of mouth kept going but I then you go oh so amazing I want to see where she goes next yeah so that indirectly became a marketing tool for me which is which is great but it's like that's the idea like do what you love yeah because a lot of times we uh, we tend to like well let's see what people like let's do that yeah but it's at the end of the day it's just do what you love and that's what drawn people I think 
Yeah, I, I love that. The, and I keep saying in a lot of these interviews, for me, sometimes I do trust it, but it becomes difficult when you work commercially because you start thinking about what is someone going to like. Like, if I paint something, is this something that will fit in their baby's room? Or I start working from a commercial angle instead of what is truly speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Although I try to strike a balance with that. But how do you do that? Do you just trust it so much now that you're able to say, okay, I will continually follow what I love and transition my work whenever I feel ready and see what happens? Or do you worry about if you get the impulse to do that, will that change the course of your business or customer base or following? I think, luckily, I'm at a point where I'm... A, I'm able to maybe experiment different things and not have to worry oh my gosh I'm gonna lose like a thousand followers like I don't yeah. need to worry about that now not because like oh they're so loyal to me but because I realize every time I change or shift I might lose some followers I might lose some sort of clients but then I end up gaining another type of clients where someone that's more aligned with you right that's so it doesn't ma matter really matter how you shift because I try shifting different ways just to test it and yeah every time I change the way I do or maybe I shoot more food then I get more restaurant clients and then suddenly I do more fashion and then I suddenly get more fashion clients so it's very interesting and and that that line from the movie um you know, if you build it, they'll come. Yeah. It's so true because yeah. you just build whatever that's you and the right people will come and not to worry about like, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose some clients. I'm going to like not getting the right clients, but just stay being true to yourself, I think. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's the only way that this works ultimately. It just is the only way to to evolve because so I think too with this series one of the parts of this life I want to address besides some of the struggle that we might talk about is what happens after you follow your dream right everybody is like follow your dream okay we know we can do that and it's amazing time and and there's so much opportunity and possibility but I'm realizing almost 10 years into this part of my journey well what happens once you're in it because it isn't that you just hit this momentum and it stays. Mm -hmm. It is exactly what you're talking about. It's you'll feel good about things, things will go well, and then something will shift. And you might be hard on yourself or you might lose work or you, you know, it's, it's not a consistent journey. And I don't think most people talk about that part. It's sort of like, okay, you followed your dream. And it, if we're watching from the outside, we're thinking it's all going so smoothly because you did it and you're sharing, you know, certain parts of it. And so it's important. I'm trying to think of where I'm trying to go with all of this. <laughs> but I think um, having a dream and arriving to it, it's great. But then that's, and then the hard work is actually once you're in it. I'm fascinated by this idea that you, I don't know if love is the right word, but you're, that you, do you, you love failure or it gives you comfort maybe to go be able to experience it or you were also saying that it's you can't create sometimes unless you're sad like I'm fascinated with this I've never heard anyone say that they that they and like failure or appreciate it or you know where it's like we're trying to avoid it all the time society it feels like right because then we're not to me I, I don't think I'm balanced if I'm not if I'm always happy and there's no sadness, um, and plus I tend to like really darker side of the art. Um, Would like well, give me an example. Um, like there are arts that's maybe cutesy, like with the big eye character, but then you know the subject is something really dark. Yeah, I tend to like things like that. Yeah. So I think when I'm too happy, my pictures seem a little boring. <laughs> for you, for but you. But having failure, it's almost like you get cuts. It's almost like I get the scar. I'm cool. <laughs> but if I'm so perfect, then it's like not as um, characteristic, maybe. Well, how does that translate to your commercial 
work. That's been my struggle last year when I transitioned into doing more commercial because when you're doing clients' work, it's so different. Yeah. They, you might do it this way, but then they might say, "Well, we want it that way," and then so you suddenly feel like, "Well, I thought you hired me to let me be creative," but then. A friend of mine gave me a really a good point. She said, "When you work for someone, for instance, doing commercial work, your work is no longer your work. Your work is your client's work. You basically do it what they needed. Yeah, they're, they're, you turn their vision to help turn that vision into a, a reality, like a either a photo or a drawing. Yeah, and to find that balance as a client, uh, as an artist." I should do more personal work, where that's where I can find myself doing things that satisfy myself.、Um, so ever since she gave me that pointer, I started doing that, and so I also started a different Instagram account where I could do more like really random stuff. And then my original Instagram, it's more still very commercial, very I mean, it's still me, but it's like another part of me. Yeah, B side Bonnie, right? B side、oh. Bonnie. My and didn't、husband. you? Don't you photograph? Just like give me an example of what you might put on B side Bonnie versus versus your Bonnie saying.、Um, so the other night I walked by in downtown LA, and there's this red plastic cup. Someone finished a beer or something, and just like, <laughs> you know, on the floor. And I was like fascinating because everywhere is so dark and gray, you know, downtown LA. And then、yeah. suddenly there's this bright red cup, and I just took a picture of that. And I know that's something I would put up B side because on the commercial side, no one's gonna respond because <laughs> it's not food, it's not pretty, it's not like n- nice and light and bright. <laughs> so that's the different sides of me. Does it? Well, in fairness, I think we all have those sides, right? Right. Like, but how much do we really let? I think some people call it your shadow side. How much do we really let that exist? And I think what's inspiring listening to you talk today is this feeling that you really you try to embrace both in your work, in your life. And it's true. We don't actually know the highest of highs if we haven't had the lowest of lows. How do we appreciate that? You know, it really is. Oh, I remember too what you were saying before. Before the ice machine came on, <laughs> you were talking about the hard work is in when we're in this in this dream that we followed, being able to really sort of ride the waves of well, the highs and the lows of doing this kind of work, and that nobody really. Well, I was saying that nobody really tells you how、mm-hmm. to do that. So I guess a, a good analogy was that. Let's say you're serving.、Um, bring out the board, walk toward the water. That's going toward your dream, and it's actually the easiest part. And to once you get out there, how do you ride? You know, go along with the way. That's when it's your work comes in. So I think arriving to your dream, it's actually the easiest part. But to maintain it and how to go higher, that's where we have to put in our hard work. Have you ever surfed before? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have, and it's funny that you say that because I wanted to do a whole podcast about how surfing is totally relates to life. Because when you do go out, there is no way of predicting how and when. First, when a wave is going to come. I mean, there are times and conditions where they come more frequently, but you don't. You have to really be able to read the wave, and you're so in the element. There's no way of control controlling all of that for people like me who sort of like to manage it and think、right. they have it in control. You have to completely give in, and you can, especially when you're learning, you can totally get spanked. And by patience wave, too, because patience. a lot of times you just yeah, you know, <laughs> sit there and wait for the wave and a really long time. To, yeah, you don't know when it's coming. It's it's such a that's specific... totally how we are, right? Because there are times when we get a lot of work, but there are times that require your patience, where we might not get work. What are you gonna do? Do you find that it, that your business really is cyclical? Like, there's no way to predict. No way to predict. And what do you do in the times where you feel like, oh, there isn't any work coming in? Do you panic, or you were saying? I、oh. totally panic. <laughs> Because 
I have, what does your panic look like? The difference is, <laughs> if I'm by myself, I might not panic, but because I have a child and yeah. then also my parents, I get, I, yeah, I get panicked. But then it's almost like, do you go after work during that time, I or do don't. you learn to wait for the wave? To I learn to wait, and then I learn during this wait time. This is the time to put out what you want to become, what I want to become. So, for instance, like oh, I've been shooting weddings too much. So in the waiting time, which which is transitioning, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Um, then I put out more work that I want to be able to do. So maybe shooting more fashion, or maybe creating more. Or at the more time you were saying you started shooting more food, more food. that's sort of how you transitioned from weddings to food, and then maybe like still life. Um, so online magazines start getting really popular. So. Through before the social media, I made friends with some of the then became online magazine editor where I started shooting more for them, and from that, I get I gain more audience too for doing more commercial work. So it's like really interesting how I don't specifically look for work, but I change my either attitude or what I put out and. I'm not hoping, but like in some way, when I'm so focused on doing what I want to do, then those people would just always naturally come、they、to find me. you. But you're being when you say you're changing maybe your attitude, you're being very conscious about it. You're making very specific decisions. Right. right. In the so、background. what didn't work? Let's not do that anymore. These people weren't giving you bringing the best in you as an artist, as a person. Sound really bad, but like cut, cut them, them off、yeah. because I'm putting too much energy on the negative things that wasn't helping me. Then I should just, I just, it was hard. Even now, I feel guilty. But is this when you transition specifically when you transition from out of weddings? Yeah, were, these were the decisions you made, right? A, a conscious de- decision where I stopped following on Twitter. I would completely unfollow a lot of. Wedding blogs, and then I'm like, well, I want to do more fashion, so I started following more fashion magazine.、Okay. But that, for me, is like helps with my career because I'm like, well, if I'm not doing this, why am I still having these set of people and you know, blogger, not bloggers, but like blogs or media? Why am I still keeping them when I don't need to keep in touch? I should learn、yeah. from these other people, but. I think a lot of people take it in a personal way, where oh, you, why aren't you following me? So I might along the way I did hurt some people, but I think at the end it's like, well, I have to remember this is work.、Mm-hmm. In real life, I love seeing them. In the real life, I'm like, well, I, you know, you're still my friend. <laughs> On work side, so it's hard to. I mean, I, eventually, sometimes you do something, you're hurt, right? Yeah. Well, that. Inevitably, I hurt. How、someone. do you deal with like social media is tough because we see a lot of things we never saw before. We see friends getting together, maybe we weren't included. Right. We see events, maybe we weren't invited. I mean, are you? It sounds like you're really good at saying, "This is just my business," and do you not take things personally then either? Are you able to? Like I'm not good at that. I get sometimes I have to just not engage that way because I'll compare myself too much, or I'll feel hurt by something, or I'll feel left out. And I so wish that I was growing out of it. But I, it's almost like social media and everything made it worse. It feels like I'm in high school all over again. But I'm in my forties. Come on, <laughs> like, when is it going to end? So I'm dying to know when you have a following like you do. How do you separate? Or how do you not take those things personally? I think trust,、um, trust that their decision is based on their business, and then trust also that I'm good enough that there's a reason why I wasn't invited. Maybe it's、yeah. because they already invited me to this other thing, and they want to introduce this other set of people together. So. There's a lot of reason where I will never know, but I have to trust that I'm a good person. I don't think they would hate me. Yeah.、Um, for whatever for whatever reason, 
if I see it coming from love, that I love myself, I don't think I'm a bad person, <laughs> and then I love them, that there must be a reason why I wasn't invited. So yeah, a lot of talking to myself, but of course there's feelings of hurt, but then remind myself that, okay, trust and love, um, those two things That's help nice, me. Bonnie. <laughs> It's so nice. I mean, it's true. It's so simple and it's so true. I would, in the conversation I was having recently, it's more the idea to remember that people actually do love you. They do want to support you rather than feel like they're trying to leave you out or, you know, they don't like you anymore. Like, why not look at it the other way and trust, like you're saying, that they're making decisions that feel right for them right. and that ultimately that will be right for you. Like, I have learned that in my life. If I'm not included in something over here, it's probably okay because I'm a better fit here or right. more, you know, I'm enjoying myself more here or it just, it does work itself out. And that's the same idea with work too. Sometimes we might not get a certain gig yes. and we might feel like, oh my gosh, they hired that person. This yeah. must, must be because they're way better than me. But um, yeah, again, coming from love that, oh, at the end of the day when later I get another gig I realize oh wait this one fit better. me so much yes. better than the other one because I had to chase that one which is you should never chase anything yeah that's well, yeah, what, yeah what about uh, that's an interesting concept too what do you mean by you should never chase anything I believe in just keep working on myself rather than chase um, because I believe when I work harder, I become a higher level of myself, then I reach another level of people. And then once I get higher again, I reach another level. That's how I always have that mentality. Um, and some people might say, well, you're not a go-getter. Like, as a business <laughs> owner, you did a hustle. And, but I, I don't know. That's how I functioned for the longest time because I chased before. And at the end of the day, I was like, it's either I make the wrong decision. Yeah. Or it's too tiring to keep up. Yeah, I agree. I'm lear I'm trying to learn to let that go, because I'm I'm starting to prove to myself that the chase isn't necessarily netting me what I think it's supposed to. That when I really follow these principles and ideas that you're talking about, when I really am able to embody them, not just know them intellectually and experience it, things work out. You know how like driving, yeah, like. There's this guy who's just trying to f go faster than you. Like, go faster, and then at the end, there's a In red LA? light. No. <laughs> and then you arrived at the red light, but damn, there's You're me. Right. I still <laughs> arrived at the red light, like, easily. So, yep. I think There's about no that a lot. Point. Like, what was the point of the rush and the chase and the you're almost like hurting another driver sometimes? I think it's the society yes. brainwash at that. Oh, you need to hustle or else yeah. you're not getting anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. you're finding, but well, you were saying before you panic, but but oh, this I'm that's glad where I the ego talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I remembered this because a lot of times when it gets slower in business, which is normal, seasonal, whatever reason, instead of panicking, using that time to become more, to learn something, to improve a skill, to try a different creative pursuit, to organize and prepare for when it is busy. Mm -hmm. That's something that I've tried practicing and so don't panic. <laughs> right. Panic and fear shuts your brain down yeah. where you don't actually receive ideas or it, like it doesn't help anything. I'm trying to learn look like, panic and stress, not or not stress, but just like anxiety around mm. the panic isn't doing you any good. It's not making anything any better. And have to constantly remind myself that oh, right now is your resting period because you're gonna get so busy, you're gonna be like craving for this rest. Right. So just rest. To right embrace now. it, to be able to either take the pause or just enjoy or learn something new and put your energy in a new direction. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. Well, one of the things that we were talking about a little, and you tell me how, how comfortable you feel going there, but you were saying, we were talking about we don't always know or feel comfortable as creatives addressing the struggle behind the lives that we lead. Is there anything that you feel like you want to add to what we've talked about in terms of just... Do you still feel like, oh, I wish people would be more open with the highs and the lows of 
a business or just living a creative life like this, do you feel do you feel people are open enough or because you were saying well, at one time you were thinking like it'd be nice to have a group where we could show up and just sort of be ourselves with with everything you know mm-hmm. including what we struggle with sometimes on the other side of it yeah um, I think people tend to not talk about it because they feel like struggle means failure I think but because I see failure as such a pretty right? thing so why <laughs> not make it into art and share it out there and as an outlet so I think maybe my perspective is a little different. But um, but the great thing about social media now is that by me doing that, I, I see a lot more people slowly becoming more open to sharing that, which is great. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's happened, you have millions of people on Pinterest. Is that, and part of it is probably there was a time where everyone got on. I was not one of those people, but a lot of people got on at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And I know that you were saying to me that people now refer to you as a tastemaker. So you're not only just on the photography side, but that really, in a way, you do. You're you have a great aesthetic. You have a great eye, and you are influencing people on that level. But that's not something that you are. You getting more comfortable with that idea? No, no, you don't. <laughs> like, what does that mean to you? Even being called blogger or something. I'm like, I'm not a blogger. <laughs> and then my blogger friends would be like, What's wrong with bloggers? <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. It's just that mm, I guess I'm hoping more people see me as a photographer and social media is just a, a hobby it's something i'm interested in because i'm i love business marketing you i do. get excited about talking you I do. Do. yeah what do you so love about it because most of us that's the part we're like oh we don't want to talk about what we do i have a lot more books on business marketing than for i mean i i feel like photography it's um a skill i have yeah um, but my passion is on business marketing, and you know I just use that combine the two together, uh, which works out. But yeah, because business business marketing is almost the same as social media, so I'm fascinated by it. What is the most fascinating thing to you about it? Just how people become interested in what you're doing as a business? Or? How what you put out you became. So. Um, I made a conscious decision last year, maybe a year or so, that I'm like, you know what, I need to change my career where I want this type of client instead of this type. So how do I do that? Then by doing so, I need to study who they are. And from who they are, do I find a common thread with who I am? So suddenly I realized, okay, I'm all these things, right? There are days when I want to use a pink purse. There are days when I want to wear yellow and green pants. But most of the time, I'm just very plain, like black and white. And then maybe and a, a little, Darth Vader sweatshirt. Yeah, and then maybe a little gold thing. Like, it's just one tiny sparkly, like silver shoes or just one gold cuff. And that's me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to be that. The black and white little, with a little gold which is, I feel more comfortable doing that. And so from that, I changed my whole website, what I post on Instagram, what I put out on Pinterest, what I pin. So even though I drawn to color, I don't really post it. It's because, well, that's not Bonnie. That's not Bonnie as a brand. And so after doing all that cleaning up and stuff, and suddenly like, oh, people see black and white picture on Pinterest, they're like, that's Bonnie saying. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's very conscious. But again, it's through business marketing mm-hmm. that um, to find yourself an identity. Like Carl Lagerfeld, Lug- always wearing the same thing, glasses. Yeah. And from far away, you're like, okay, that's him. And then Tom Ford, always wear a suit. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, what, do they even change their clothes? Like, it doesn't matter because that's, that's their identity and people are drawn to that. What if they want to change the identity? What happens then if you're feel like it sounds like you're able to shift enough that it's it's still always staying true to who you are, but you can evolve within that. Like that's what I always hope for myself as an artist. But I get afraid of being really specific about something because I'm afraid I'm gonna get locked into that and what if I what if I wanna change that? 
I think at this moment this is me, but I I keep growing as a person. So who knows? Maybe next year I suddenly feel like it's I all color, all <laughs> colors, and suddenly every everything change. But the amazing thing is always yeah. during transitions, quiet time. You suddenly people don't like as much your photos, or you don't get as many clients. But once the transition is over, you're doing more and more. Yeah. Then suddenly I have maybe colorful clients. <laughs> the brand that are colorful will come asking me to work. So it's always I don't I'm not scared of transitioning. Um, just to know that there will be a quiet moment, but. I can transition to anything. I feel like, and I can still find clients because, again, if you build it, I, they'll come. Yeah, I believe you. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I see you doing it. What would be? Do you have a favorite business marketing or a couple of them that you really like? Um, you mean person or, or book or yeah? Seth Golden is one of my. I look up to him because he believes in marketing in a loving way. Yeah. Um, in a positive, loving way, it doesn't have to be loud. It could be like educational, and yeah, he, I like that too. Yeah, his a more personal very, approach. Yeah, um, I subscribe to his newsletter. It's um, it's really great stuff. Yeah, um, and then just read a lot of business magazines and see what's new, what's out there. Keep myself refreshed. So thinking, oh, I'm I'm good enough. I'm gonna just stay still. I yeah, yeah always learn, always yeah. learn. That's really see you make it all look so seamless, but you're putting a lot of thought uh-huh. into it. And I I think sometimes people don't understand that either. It's like people achieve certain levels of success or you know notoriety in their work because they they put a lot of work into that it doesn't it's not something that happens overnight Mm -hmm. it's an evolution and even being able to do what you're doing i'm doing that a little bit right now i'm changing my website i'm changing the overall feel of things i can feel it happening and it's totally scary but it's also exciting and i'm intuiting that a little bit but um, now I'm a, I have to read more. I have to not and be also, afraid of it. The marketing side of it, sometimes I still like. Yeah, and then when we just put out new stuff, we tend to like, oh my gosh, it's not, it's not doing well because no one's responding. Right. And I remember I had this conversation with my daughter. She's like, last year, 10 euro, and then I, I was uh, selling postcards. I was like, oh, let's try, because I never want to print my stuff. I won't, never want to sell prints for some reason because I feel like no one's going to buy them. Yeah, but um, it's hard. It's hard uh, to put your stuff and be like, hello, buy it. Yeah. <laughs> don't just like it. Buy so it. I just put out some postcards and I was telling them, like, I don't think anyone will buy it. Oh my gosh, it's, who wants to buy the postcard? And then she's like, well, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, even Katy Perry, her first album, not that many <laughs> people bought it. So it's okay. And now she's a rock star. I'm like, you're right. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, like I tend, we tend to be so harsh on ourselves. Like yeah. you're not doing well enough, and you're a failure, but it's not. So, the photography it is transitioning into you doing more consulting. And when I listen to you talk about this, I'm like, good, please do because it's great advice that you're offering. And is that something that you see your business growing into now beyond the photography, doing more social media consulting or? I think I struggled with that in the beginning because I was like, well, I'm a photographer. Now I'm being hired to do a lot more social media. Um, but accepting the fact that, okay, yeah, it's part of what I love. You love it. You love just it. Said, yeah. Um, so it's just basically people are resonating with it. And then I should accept that. It's okay. You don't have to be just photography. You can yes, be anything. You can be anything. Yeah. So once I accept that and totally change my profile and say, call myself a social media consultant, mm-hmm. um, I've been getting, I love it. Because when I talk about these things and help other, other businesses how to grow their business, I feel really good. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So where is it all going for you? Where's the next wave? <laughs> Where's the next wave gonna take you? I don't right know. Right now, actually. like the snapshot of where you are. Right now, I feel like I'm really lucky because I can shoot and then I know social media. So when I get gigs now to shoot for clients, they will be like, oh, can you also do social media? So it's almost like I get two jobs out of 
one client.、Mm-hmm. So it's been great, and also accept that okay, they like my work, but they also like that I can you know promote. Promote, yeah. yeah. So it's like two things at one, and、um, accepting that has been really great. But then the next wave, I don't know what's the next wave. <laughs> When it comes, I'll ride, I'll ride on it, <laughs> and then maybe I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> And、you probably have already said this within all of this, but if you were to tell somebody starting out or in it, is there one thing that comes to mind for you when someone chooses this life, like really gets into this creative life?、Mm, I think be humble and do the hard work. Yeah, because I. I see a lot of people thinking, "Oh, it's so easy," but it's not.、Mm-hmm. And then when you humble yourself, you're able to take in more, actually, because it's the idea of a full cup where your cup is already full. You think you know so much, but you can accept more things in it. But once you let that go and just be humble and think, "Oh, I'm well," it's not good to always think we're I'm not good enough, but like thinking there's still room to improve. That would be. Then that's when you can accept new ideas and doing new things and be different from other people. That's my thought. <laughs> well, I already feel better, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Yay! That was good. Huh? <laughs>